idea that you've got? Microsoft will get to connect you with the developers and startups that share your goals. Learn new skills, meet new peers, and discover the latest in technology. Events are running around the clock, so join us anytime, anywhere. Reactors are communities to connect. We want you to meet real developers and entrepreneurs just like you. Here you can get skilled up and learn from our product experts in the Microsoft Cloud and in open source. So watch us on demand and share your own perspective as we live stream in communities all around the world. Hello everyone. Hey, hi Vivek. Hey Pat, how are you? I I'm see good. you're in office. Yes, I am a reactor. Fantastic. Hey folks, good evening Fantastic. to you all. I am Parth Varu, event planner for Microsoft Reactor. Thank you all for joining us today. The lessons from football, the lessons from football will run over 60 minutes by Vivek and Sanjit. But before we begin, please take a moment to read our code of conduct. We are all here to learn together. So please be respectful of other people's views, understanding of differences being kind and considerate in the way you engage. The chat is open throughout and we do encourage you all to participate. So please post all your questions in the chat section. Now, I request Vivek to take over the platform and begin the session. Thanks, Pat. Thanks, Pat. So let me bring in the guest. You know, it's more important to have guests live. live. Hey, Sanjit, how are you? Hey, I Vivek. Both of you. Good evening in office what of you in office <laughs> good to be at the workplace vivek i i, I was thinking that you would do this uh, live session from qatar <laughs> <laughs> they're like oh i mean i, I was chasing you I, oh he's in qatar how will we do the session <laughs> fantastic yeah hey Sanjay, cool. vivek, and I see, I see a football uh, behind you vivek oh yeah i see yes. a football it's basically Saura Gongoli playing football. I mean, it's oh, <laughs> relatable. <laughs> it's relatable, right? So that's that's the idea. Cool. And uh, yes, uh, today is very different, right? Today we have a different kind of a session. Um, it's we are not talking tech, and uh, we are basically talking very differently. You know, it's it's kind of. Uh, uh, let me talk about the background of this session. You know, I heard. Sanjit doing this session uh, to the team, you know, within within the team meeting, and I said, okay, why not do it this uh, session for the broader audience as well, because it definitely helped me and definitely will help others as well. So yeah, Sanjit, uh, welcome to Reactor, your first Reactor presence. Welcome to Reactor, and uh, you have been in sales, marketing, product marketing. What not? And today we are not talking about that. And today we are talking about your football journey. And today we are going to talk about your, uh, your you are a football coach. You are part of the uh, you know academy and a lot of things which you do from a football perspective. So that's something which uh, we definitely want to discuss. So go ahead, Sanjit. Uh, I am ready with my pen and my book so that I can take notes uh, and um, make sure that I learn again you know it's whenever I hear this again and again there is obviously there is a lot of learning there right so I'm going to make notes for myself as well so that I mean people who are listening to this you know you should also have you know your own pen and paper keep it ready learn some Sanjit today cool Sanjit go ahead all your you bring in your, bring in your son. Sure. So just let me know if all of you can see my screen. Yes, I'm bringing your screen now. Just give me a moment. Yes, it's up. Awesome. So, uh, you know, first and foremost, thank you. I understand, uh, you know, the end audience uh, is obviously all the developers, specifically folks representing the startup community, right? Uh, and uh, me and Vivek, we actually had a chat. Um, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, how does sports, um, you know, integrate with whatever we do? Uh, 
um, and uh, I thought that you know it would be a good idea for me to actually share uh, some snippets, uh, you know, in terms of how football relates to our corporate avatar, uh, what we basically do. So Vivek, uh, you know, as you mentioned, right, you were a little bit worried that you know I'm in Qatar. Uh, and how I would be doing the session. So just, you know, just, just, uh, you know, wanted to share that, yes, uh, it was a bucket list for me. Uh, I think two things stood out. One, obviously, is the entire in-stadium experience. That was definitely one. But I think what really, um, you know, I thought was exceptional was that the entire city, which was the outside stadium experience was something which was really fascinating. Uh, so with that, uh, you know, let me just uh, start off. Uh, see, this is something, uh, you know, everybody, um, you know, I would say, you know, would, hang on, the screen is not moving. Give me a sec. Okay, great. Uh, so I think, uh, you know, for everyone, right, uh, there must be something which you folks look in uh, and for me uh, you know i think what is very very critical uh, and i strongly believe is that when you want something the universe conspires in helping you to achieve it and this i would again relate it to football because today's session is around football one i think i don't know how many of you you know uh, follow football as a sport but folks who follow football as a sport i think you know the entire universe is conspiring uh, you know, with Lionel Messi uh, to ensure that, you know, he lifts the World Cup. Um, that's one. Uh, second, I think, uh, you know, the entire uh, opportunity which I got uh, to go and visit, uh, you know, the football, World Cup football, again, you know, that was something, uh, you know, a dream which I had uh, since childhood. Um, and, uh, you know, it happened. So, you know, I strongly believe and specifically, you know, folks who are, you know, in the startup ecosystem, um, you know, if you really truly believe that, you know, you would want to build that product, which is going to make a difference and you really give your, you know, 100 percent, I'm sure, you know, the entire universe is going to, you know, help uh, uh, you to achieve it. Uh, you know, quickly talking about myself, uh, you know, a couple of things, I think, uh, you know, while the professional avatar has been put in uh, what I do at Microsoft, uh, but I just wanted to, you know, quickly highlight that, uh, uh, you know, I have been lucky uh, to visit the entire seven northeastern states of India. Uh, you know, my father, uh, you know, he used to work for the uh, Northeastern Electric Power Corporation, uh, you know, as a, uh, uh, you know, general manager uh, building hydroelectric projects. So as, as it turned, you know, kept on moving places, you know, I speak five Indian languages. Uh, which is there, uh, football, cricket, being a Bengali, uh, obviously sports is something which I'm passionate about. I did my uh, de-licensing coach, coaching certification from AIFF. Uh, you know, I also write. Um, and there is something obviously which is loading uh, because there are a couple of multi-facets, you know, which I'm still yet to discover uh, what's next for me. Uh, so without much ado, so let me just, you know, quickly talk about you know, as a football coach and a person who follows football, you know, there are certain learnings which we have, right? Uh, and uh, that is what I'm going to share, uh, you know, in the next uh, 35, 40 minutes. So if you take a look, uh, you know, before I play the video, right? So just to give a quick background, I mean, pardon me for the quality of the video. Uh, you know, this video snippet uh, is from the year 2003. Uh, and this was a Denmark versus an Iran match, right? And and, and I'm talking about the first lesson, uh, you know, what we learned from sports. Uh, so what was happening was that it was a crucial time. The match was getting played. Uh, and what happened was that, you know, from the crowd, there was a whistle which actually, you know, was blown. So the defender, you know, thought that it was the ref or the referee who blew the whistle. And he picked up the ball, but unfortunately, it was from the gallery and not from the referee. So obviously, you know, as a part of the football rules, because you, you know, pick the uh, ball with, with your hand, it was a foul and a penalty was given. Now, the Iranian team obviously protested, uh, you know, that, you know, it was by mistake. 
but at that point of time you know the referee said that a rule is a rule and they handed denmark as a you know the the penalty there so morten weighurst right uh, you know who took the penalty right spoke to their coach before the penalty and what he did was something uh, which was unbelievable so what he did was that he kicked the ball outside the box right and denmark incidentally lost that match to iran 1-0 but what was very important was that the entire stadium including the iranian supporters and the footballers gave a standing ovation to the denmark team so just i mean just playing the video just take a look and just let me know if you all can see the video right so <clears throat> you know just wanted to you know say i think this is one big thing uh, you know which uh, you know comes in that you know you need to respect one another now whether it is the football field or whether it is the corporate field you know the first biggest learnings um, is respect one another right uh, now you know quickly moving on to my next slide uh, and just take a look at this video Ronaldo goes on the break. Nothing becomes of it. Cristiano Ronaldo has not had the best of fortunes in the Manchester derby. He's actually the only player to have been sent off more than once in this fixture in January of 2006 and November of Okay, so you know, and this is you know very very critical. So what you saw in the video is that you know when you play as a team, right? Uh, you know you win. Uh, you know, and, and I think all of us know, right? The the full form of team is together. Everyone achieves more. Uh, and and this is something which uh, you know I also wanted to you know quickly talk about from my experience because I coach children, right? So when you have all these, you know, under seven, under eight kids who really come to play football, the first thing when you ask them that, you know, which position, uh, you know, do you want to play? Everybody wants to be a Messi and a Ronaldo. So everybody wants to score goals. Nobody wants to be a goalkeeper. Nobody wants to be a defender. Everybody just wants to be Messi or the striker, right? But the key critical thing from this video, which I wanted to show or highlight is that as a team when everybody participates when everybody you know has one common vision of achieving you know whatever be the outcome i think together team is going to win so that's that's the second big learning uh, you know which comes from the game of football now let me talk about the third one and this is quite interesting okay During the 2015 Copa del Rey final, Lionel Messi demonstrated the skills that make him the best footballer on the planet with his first goal of the match. It's out of this world, and it's pure genius! After receiving the ball just past midfield, Messi goes from virtually zero to 19.5 miles an hour in just 2.7 seconds. That's an acceleration on par with an American football speedster, NFL All-Pro, Jamal Charles. And Messi does it with the ball at his feet. But his three defenders trap him on the sideline, each coming within six feet of the ball. Messi begins to decelerate. 
This allows him to make three short controlled touches, effectively beating the Bilbao players in just 1.2 seconds. As he enters the box, Messi uses an inside out move to open up more than five feet of space. This gives him just enough room to rip a 48 mile per hour near post shot that misses the keeper's outstretched hand by less than six inches. In a span of just over 11 seconds, in a possession that covered nearly 60 yards, the ball was more than two feet away from Messi just twice. And for a grand total of less than two seconds. And the finish was just as spectacular as the dribble to fit the ball in a window that small from 14 yards away. Messi's lateral aim couldn't be off by more than three fourths of a single degree. That means if Messi's point of contact on the ball shifted left or right by just 1.5 millimeters, he misses. That's a margin of error about the width of a blade of grass. And the incredible precision Messi showed on this goal is why in La Liga this season, Messi converted on his shots at a rate 21% higher than the... All right. <clears throat> so why I wanted to show this video was that, uh, you know, there will be times, right, when the team is actually trying to do something. There might be certain, you know, uh, you know, obstacles or hurdles which might come in. Uh, and then, you know, you really need somebody, you know, from the team to actually step up, do something new out of the box, which is going to really uplift the entire team's morale. Right. And, and we have seen in multiple sports, uh, you know, this video actually, you know, talks about, uh, you know, Messi lifting that and rest is history. Uh, if I have to give a quick example, uh, I don't know how many of you would remember, uh, you know, Sachin Tendulkar playing that, uh, you know, Desert Storm Sharjah innings, uh, where he scored those back to back, uh, you know, blitzkering innings where, uh, you know, he single handedly defeated the Australians. Right. Uh, so, so the entire, I would say, you know, key learning here is that, you know, while we work as a team, right, uh, there will be situations, there will be certain times when, you know, the morale is down, things might not be happening and then you need magic to happen. Uh, and that is what, you know, we saw from this video that, you know, Messi uh, did that magic. And, and th I think that is also happening in this World Cup as well. When, uh, you know, things were not going right for Argentina, I think the magic man, Messi himself, you know, started to score those goals or give or provide those assists uh, to his team, which actually has now made the Argentinian team, uh, you know, look so formidable and so strong. Okay, so so that was basically, you know, the third I would say learning, uh, you know, from the game of football. Now let me quickly go to the next one, and uh, uh, you know, before I play this, okay, uh, you know, just wanted to. Uh, you know, quickly give a background. And, uh, you know, this is, uh, you know, uh, from the movie Pele. If you, if you folks uh, have watched it, it's great. But just to give a quick background that, uh, you know, Brazilians typically, you know, there's this form, uh, you know, uh, of football, which is, you know, which we all love, admire, right? Uh, that is Jinga. Uh, and that word, you know, came from Capoeira. And that's the Brazilian fighting dance. Uh, you know, it's 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 a word which can be used to describe someone who can go go with the flow, so on and so forth, right? Uh, uh, and uh, Pele's entire football style, right, derives from Jenga. Uh, and just to give a quick history, that uh, you know, in the 16th century, uh, when the Portuguese arrived in Brazil with African slaves, uh, you know, the the Africans, uh, you know, obviously did not want to be bowed down so so they they escaped to the forest right and uh, you know they started to call upon jenga and the entire foundation of capoeira the martial war uh, art of war actually started right uh, when that entire slavery was actually abolished right and and then those uh, brazilians came out obviously uh, you know the capoeiristas you know saw that it was outlawed and the only way how they could practice that was through football 
Now, what happened, uh, you know, at in 19, uh, I think that was 1950, uh, when, you know, Brazil used to play, uh, you know, football in that style and they lost the World Cup. And the Brazilian football manager and coach, uh, you know, um, Vicente, uh, uh, if I remember his name correctly, you know, blamed the entire style of Jenga, uh, you know, um, saying that, you know, it was because of Jenga, uh, you know, they lost. So when he was forming, uh, you know, a team in the year 1958 with, uh, you know, Pele and Socrates and, and, and Didi, so and so forth, right, uh, you know, while they were playing, he was very adamant, saying that nobody is going to play uh, in the Jenga style. And he was trying to make them play the way how, you know, he was, you know, he wanted them to play. And then, uh, you know, in the quarterfinals, when Brazil was playing, um, you know, the way how the coach actually said, you know, Brazil was actually losing. They were one goal down. And then Pele did something which obviously the coach did not expect. And he started to, you know, get the Jenga form of playing football and rest is history. So just, just go through this video and Team Sweden, they all want the Jules Rimet Trophy to stay on friendly shores and stay it will from the looks of things as the victory celebrations begin here in Rotunda Stadium even the 11 Brazilians on the field can't deny the Expected turn, and this is a team Brazil like we've never seen them before. Just exuding confidence. Now the big question: Can they do it again? It's lead home to Gren, back to Gustafsson, and now over to Hammond. Hammond pushing it forward to Simonson, and now Reina sends his defence forward in a full attack. It's Bergmark forward to lead home, marked by Orlando. He passes to Simonson. Simonson back to lead home. And now it's Gustafsson again. He sends it into the area looking for Simonson. Simonson over to Grant. Gilmar is coming out of the goal. Red drops. It's Bergmark. And Orlando has it away. Jonathan's now for a continue attempt for a counterattack. Bavar now marked by Axbom, Borgeson comes in for the stop, and now Bavar dishes it out to Garincha, third marks there, Garincha faints, leaves the flank, can't hit Garincha now all alone, Benson comes out to challenge the cross, it's Bavar, goal, two to one, Brazil has taken the lead, Sweden caught on, and T. So, so what I just wanted to, you know, tell is that, you know, when you work, right, uh, you know, you as an individual, you know, you are unique and you bring certain, you know, strengths, uh, you know, to the table. So one of the key learning aspects is, you know, from a personality standpoint, try to be yourself. Don't try to copy someone, uh, you know, and this is something, you know, again, uh, you know, as a football coach, uh, you know, when I see those kids playing, you know, you will not have everybody having the same skill set. Uh, you know, there will be somebody, you know, who runs very fast. Maybe, you know, for that child or that player, maybe a winger position is excellent. There might be somebody who dribbles very good. 
maybe you know his position can be a striker a center forward somebody really understands the game maybe a defender or a midfield position is something which is there so everybody brings on uh, you know their unique uh, capabilities abilities to the table so always try to be yourself right so that was another learning so let me just show the next video Well, I'm not going to spend much time, but uh, but obviously, you know, these were a couple of back passes by the players who were trying to give it back to their keeper. And instead of giving it back to the keeper, obviously, you know, the passes went horribly wrong. And I think this is very, very critical. You know, that is about technique, you know, keep on practicing and strengthening the basics. Now, whether it is the business, yeah, and... Uh, what we typically fall um, you know, into the conundrum is that we try to do so many newer things, uh, you know, but forget the basics. So always remember the more core strong your basics are, you know, you can always build on from that versus the other way. And this is something, you know, which I uh, give an analogy to all uh, the kids who actually come that, you know, when you are building a tall you know, uh, uh, let's say a 40 story building. And if your base is not strong, it doesn't matter how strong, you know, your 40th or the 39th floor is, right? So you always need to have a very strong base. So just ensure that in case if you are a programmer or, you know, you are in any field, always remember that the more stronger your basics are, the more, uh, you know, advantages position you would be. I'll quickly move on to the next i would say you know learning just take a look and this has this this happened uh, you know uh, just a week back and just to give a quick uh, background so this was the argentina versus the netherlands match uh, and argentina was actually winning 2-0 the last 10 minutes of the game uh, netherlands you know scored the first goal and we were in the last 10 seconds of the game and this what happens in the last 10 seconds and Argentina thought that they had won the match. So this is what happened in the last, you know, maybe 10 or 12 seconds of the match. So they, they, they get a free kick and this what happened. So just wanted to, you know, you know, quickly highlight that typically, I mean, you know, everybody looks at, you know, when a free kick or a spot kick, kick is actually taken. I mean, the usual style of taking a spot kick is, you know, you kick the ball above the, you know, the, the wall which is standing in front of you. Now, you know, what is very, very critical is that, you know, they would have practiced this 
and pulling it off in the last 10 seconds of the game when nobody even knew that they are going to you know have a spot on uh, kick like that is something which was amazing so i think you know tactics is very very critical for all of us that we really need to know what to do and at what time because if you do not know as a team uh, that what you are doing why you are doing it becomes impossible for a team to actually succeed right so i'll quickly move on to the next uh, slide just take a look at this So why I wanted to actually, you know, highlight this, okay, so what this defender, so I don't know how many of you follow English Premier League. So this gentleman uh, goes by the name Harry Maguire uh, and he's a defender. Um, and if you take a look at the video, which I was actually, you know, showing, what was happening was that, you know, when, uh, you know, the forwards from the other team was coming, he was committing himself very early in the game. So either he used to slide in early or he used to, you know, put his leg forward even before the player came. So one of the biggest learning is never commit early. And specifically, since all of you are from the startup space and you all, you know, write codes, I guess, you know, um, and, and I'm sure Vivek would also be smiling that, you know, developers commit their codes, right? Uh, so the idea here is that, you know, don't commit your code early. I mean, just ensure that, you know, everything is done properly before you commit your code. Uh, so that is, you know, one of uh, the learnings which is there. Now, let me go to the, uh, you know, the, the next learning. And this is, I think, is one of the most important thing. Um, and I'm going to share two videos for this particular point, right? So the first video is this. Uh, I don't know how many of you would have heard. So there was this player named as Wayne Rooney. Uh, he used to play for England, Manchester United. Brilliant talent, uh, you know, at the age of 18, 19. So I'll just maybe just show one goal which he scored. Look at Dele Asquez trying to get through. Right away by Canals. Pinballs to Rooney. Rooney sees roll out. Recognition from Wayne Rooney. It's just a clearance here and then miscommunication. Doesn't even take a touch, recognizes Rose out of his box. And then the quality of the Englishman to hit it from 65, 70 yards. Nothing short of brilliant from Wayne Rooney. Maybe we saw from this angle, but being out on the field and recognizing Rose out that far. Okay, so, you know, uh, you know, I would say again, uh, you know, he was an unbelievable talent, uh, but, you know, he could not just uh, take the pressure uh, of stardom, maybe, you know, the pressures of football, so on and so forth. And, you know, he was, uh, he became an alcoholic, so on and so forth. And then obviously his entire career went into a downtrend, right? Uh, so I think one thing which is very, very critical is will over skill. 
no matter how good you are right uh, but if you don't have the will the intent of doing it it doesn't matter whether you know you have fantastic you know skills let's say you are a programmer uh, you know you know how to you know uh, you know identify bugs solve them so on and so forth but if you just don't have the will to do uh, you know all your skill goes down so this is one example which i gave about wayne rooney now let me you know go to the other example which is will over skill again now all of us know this gentleman and and he is messi uh, you know seven times ballon d'or uh, winner uh, in case if he wins the world cup i think this will be his record eight but just take a look at his story as well what do you think is going through his mind he talked about before the game he doesn't seem the same Lionel Messi as before despite him scoring goals about 6 weeks ago when he was back and he was scoring goals and playing well he looked like he was enjoying his football and I don't know what the problems are, but he doesn't seem happy at the moment. You know, we have seen so many beautiful things uh, with Messi in the last years. You know, he's, as you said, one of the best footballer that ever played the game. He's, he's a great, great person, a great football player. But if you see Messi now playing, you know, and you compare him the way he can play, you know, everyone is asking why is he playing this way? Disappointing for me. I know he was a little bit better in the second half. His movement was better, but. His body language isn't right. Um, he was disappointed at the weekend. I watched him against Granada. He was disappointed there as well, and he was disappointed again tonight. He just doesn't seem to be his own self. He's not on the ball enough. He's not causing problems like he used to. Um, you know, normally Messi will pick up the ball and he will pass through the players, but I don't know if it's pressure on himself or what it is. But he's just not firing. I mean, that shot there—it's a half a chance, but in the free kick, it's way over the top. It's not even close to hitting the target. So. It's definitely not a form. Ronaldo, he's onside. He's beaten the defence. He's caught by that. Cristiano Ronaldo with a platinum touch. This could be the most dramatic story of the season. It's Torres against Chelsea in the Champions League. Can he did well. He gets off the outside of the book. Great job! Atletico Madrid have that goal now. And it's Gonzo! It's Mario Gonzo! It's Super Mario! He likes us! Here comes Sanchez, and he wins the Copa America for Chile. Can he give Argentina the lead? Oh, he's missed. You stop being you. You let people stick a finger in your face and tell you you're no good. And when things got hard, you started looking for something to blame, like a big shadow. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place, and I don't care how tough you are, it will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. You, me, or nobody is going to hit as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. Now, if you know what you're worth, then go out and get what you're worth. But you got to be willing to take the hits. And not pointing fingers saying you ain't where you want to be because of him or her or anybody. Cowards do that and that ain't you. You're better than that. Two, three, four, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. How good is he? Oh, that's 
slipped into Messi. It's a of a challenge. It's Messi. Messi. Oh. Oh. Messi. Okay, so so I just wanted to you know quickly talk about that it is always will over skill, and I gave two examples, right? One was uh, of Wayne Rooney, great talent, but uh, you know somehow you know he just could not handle the pressure, and the second was Messi. Uh, the entire year, I think 2012-14, very lean period for him. Uh, in the Copa Americas final, he missed the penalty, and he was so devastated. Uh, he said that, you know, he's going to retire from football. He's not going to play in the national jersey anymore. But I think the president, uh, Maradona, at that point of time, spoke to him. And uh, then rest, everything is history. Uh, the way how he's actually, you know, uh, playing now uh, and keeping my fingers crossed because I'm also a Messi fan. I hope he picks up. So I think, you know, the next couple of slides, and specifically if you are in the startup ecosystem, uh, these are a couple of things, you know, which are very, very important. So when you are in the game, I mean, you know, you need to understand that, uh, you know, first, how do we define a game? If there are two players, right, or more, that's when a game exists, right? And when we talk about a game, we talk about two kinds of game. The first is a finite game and the second is an infinite game. Now, what are finite games? How do we define? Finite games are played you know, by known players, they have fixed rules, agreed upon objective. And when that objective is reached, the game ends. Yeah, there are set rules, referees there to enforce the game. But then infinite games, in contrast, are played by known and unknown players, right? There is no exact or agreed upon rules. They have no infinite time horizon and there is no finish line, right? Players change and can change the rules anytime, right? And there is nothing known as winning in an infinite game, right? Now, the biggest difference uh, between a finite and an infinite game is that a finite game is played for the purpose of winning, whereas the infinite game is actually played for the purpose of continuing the play. And hence, the infinite mindset or the infinite game simply means not caring about winning or losing in the short term. Uh, the opponent who is just playing to stay in the game is very hard to defeat. And I think all of us in our corporate avatars are playing the infinite game. And there are reasons why we are playing the infinite game. Right? There are no set players. Today, you might have a manager, a boss. That person might change. Today, you might have certain goals, targets, metrics. Tomorrow, that can completely change. You might even change your organization, right? So we are all playing that infinite game. And in the infinite game, the intent is to play the game rather than winning or losing. Now, when we play, right, always, you know, uh, you know, there's this huge sense that, you know, we have to be the best. Now, again, differentiating between striving to be the best and striving to be better, right? To be the best is a mistake. Why it's a mistake? Because it creates an illusion of an endpoint and a delusion that you can only succeed by defeating others. Now, to be better, when you are striving to be better, it shifts the focus from victory to mastery. So that technically means you are competing with your past self and raising the bar for your future self rather than competing against other. And just to give you an example in life, right? Uh, there is... You know, so, you know, if folks are married or, you know, are in relationships, right? Do you ever have that you can come first in marriage or you can come first in friendship? There's nothing like that, right? While in school, there might be finite games which you are playing because, you know, from class 6th to 7th, I come first. In class 7th, I come second, so on and so forth. But is there something known as that I come first or I win education? There's nothing like that because education, again, is playing the infinite game, right? Similarly, in the corporate avatar, right, we might, you know, beat others. Let's say there's a job, right, uh, or a promotion. We might beat others. But can you ever be the winner of a career? You can never be a winner of a career, right? And hence, it becomes very, very critical for us that what are we trying to be? Are we striving to be the best or are we striving to be better? Right. 
and now you know this i think uh, you know is something which i just wanted to share that you know as you walk so you see this flag right on one side you have something uh, you know which says victory and in the other side it says fulfillment and we must pick a direction and which one will we choose or you, which one would you be choosing if we choose the path to victory the goal is to win and you know if we win obviously you know we will experience the thrill of competition we are going to you know experience a lot of people cheering for us and then it's over you know once let's say messi lifts the world cup uh, you know the entire world will celebrate and then everybody goes home and hopefully you know we can do it again let's hope that the next world cup again he wins right but if we choose the path to fulfillment right the journey is going to be long there are times where we have to watch our steps we are going to win sometimes we are going to lose sometimes but we need to keep on going we need to keep on going we will have people coming along the journey to cheer us right but when our lives are over right and those who have joined in the path of fulfillment right not only you are you know content with yourself but you actually inspire the next generation as well which all the football greats have done whether it is pele whether it is messi you know or whether it is diego maradona right so with that uh, you know i have taken you know certain snippets and i don't know whether uh, you would have read the book from simon sinek uh, you know and and the book's name is the infinite game i think it's a fantastic book uh, you know what uh, you know i would really recommend you all to go through because we are all playing the infinite game and the last but not the least you know play together and have fun so thanks a lot uh, vivek over to you wow sanjit you know usually when guests are on my show you know i i usually stop them and ask questions and uh, you know you know trouble them with questions <laughs> but this time even I, mean, i was like listening carefully and making my notes and uh, you know trying to understand the whole thing uh, which is very interesting you know there is so many things you talked about um, and a lot of learning and i'm sure the audience would have learned a lot of things uh, from respecting i i i wrote it everything like being a team player you know taking initiatives you know building you know trying to be yourself um, will over skill that was really interesting one because uh that's the most important thing right you know only if you have that will to do stuff uh then only you will succeed it doesn't matter you have all the skills in the world and it only if you have will to spend time only if you have will to uh you know practice only if you have that attitude to go back and do stuff then only you will be able to succeed um skill is always there but you know if you have to keep working on your skills as well so lot of lot of learning there and uh, that's an amazing book as well uh, thank you for suggesting you know i even this is december you know we are in holiday season probably it's a good book to read <laughs> in the holiday season <laughs> yep so uh, i mean if if anybody has questions you know just post the questions in the chat um uh, there were people were enjoying your your session so there were some comments so i'm just putting up there uh, sanjeet for you <laughs> oh, thank okay. you and uh, yes sanjeet uh, thanks for being on the show and thank you for sharing all this insight uh, i'm sure uh, people will go back and watch it again and again and again uh, to get a lot of insight on this particular uh, you know subject right so this is the most important important thing um so i'm just waiting for any questions we can wait for one or two minutes if there are any questions so yes i know december is equal to exam season but it's also football season <laughs> so thanks for attending uh, talk here uh, and so maybe to us. maybe uh, vivek uh, you know maybe i can ask a trivia uh, you know quiz so in in yep. in the football team right so you have multiple positions right so i mean and and this is maybe to the audience right so uh, you know so we in football we have something known as transitioning to attack and transitioning to defend right so who do you think which player which position starts the attack of a team anybody you know it's it's a question 
uh, to the audience and in case you know you can type in you know it would be awesome yes i mean that's a very interesting question that's yeah, so an interesting who, question yeah so who do you think you know is the person who begins the attack anybody can there are answers coming in there is defender so somebody says defender okay and then seven six suppose okay he's talking about the jerseys okay uh, fair enough the positions okay anybody else one else uh, let me take a guess goki okay so yeah okay. so i somebody think said, uh, yeah. somebody said goalkeeper and i think that's the right answer uh, you know for a team the entire transition to attack begins from the goalkeeper and the goalkeeper is the most critical player for a team because the goalkeeper is the one uh, you know i mean obviously since we watch it on tv we do not know but is the keeper goalkeeper who's actually marshaling the entire team by shouting from the back you know watch that watch that and he's the one who's actually you know starting the attack for a team so thanks uh, uh, for for that answer <laughs> fantastic so uh, sandeep i have a question for you Argentina or France? Argentina. I'm sure you'll say Argentina. Yeah, so so, so, so <laughs> the we all says, we all want heart, Messi to win, right? <laughs> yeah, so so the heart says Argentina, uh, the mind says France, but yeah, I will go with Messi. Yeah, we all want Messi to win this World Cup, and diff, you know, you know, pick that World Cup. Okay, let's see. Let's let's uh, let's enjoy. You know, it's it's on Sunday, right? So let's let's have fun. Cool. I think this is uh, great and thanks Sanjeet again for coming on to reactor and sharing this and there are a bunch of people uh, you know just uh, just watched the movie last night the coach coaches to life the life lessons from football well wow, some nice nice stuff which has been told here uh, somebody wants France to win yes we we'll, as Sanjeet told mind says france heart says certainty uh, but we will enjoy football football wins absolutely That's football cool. wins yeah. yeah football wins yeah. yep cool thanks sanjay thanks you for being on the show thank you path for hosting us thanks everyone for joining and uh, i hope you all learned something new thank you very much thank you vivek thanks path and thanks to all the audience thank you so much